G'day guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Alex, I'm the sports physiotherapist. Today we are talking about running injuries. What are the most common running injuries and how we can prevent running injuries is gonna be the aim of today's video. So after watching today's video, you are going to know what are the major injuries that people tend to get when running and then my top exercises, my top one exercises specifically for these types of conditions and how we can add that into our program to prevent. So essentially what you'll get from today is three to five exercises that you can do to prevent running injuries that you can put on the back end of your running session. You do your run, you do your exercises, done. Won't take up a lot of time. I'm imagining 10 minutes will be all this session will take. Uh, I will provide my top one exercise, but I'll also provide some supplementary exercises as well for those people out there that are super keen and like to do a little bit extra, but definitely want to make this as specific and as least time intensive as possible. So I know that a lot of us are getting back into our running. I think this is going to be a really beneficial video for you. If you have any questions or queries, if I don't cover everything in the video, please drop it in the comments below and I'll make sure that I can answer them and get back to you as soon as I can. But guys, I really hope you enjoy this video. Stay tuned for the exercises. I'll chat to you at the end of the video. So what are the most common injuries in runners? Well, the first and most common is patellofemoral knee pain or runner's knee. And what this is, is pain around our kneecap that we generally get when we've had increased amounts of running volume. And we also feel it when going upstairs and squatting. So one that I'm sure you guys have heard of before is Achilles tendonitis or tendinopathy pain. There's two types. We've got insertional, which is where the Achilles tendon attaches onto the bone right at the very base of our heel. And then we've also got Achilles mid-portion pain, which is just above that and sort of the fleshy bit above our heel bone. And we generally get this pain from disparity in our running load. We can also get ITB friction pain or ITB syndrome, which is pain around the outside of our knee, but not quite near our knee cap. And what this is, is due to irritation of that really tough connective tissue, which makes up the ITB band and generally is quite painful when we're doing running and squatting. Our last most common running injury is plantar fasciitis, which is heel pain right at the base of the underside of our foot. We get this when we're heel striking, so when our heel comes in contact with the ground, and it's really painful, especially in the mornings, and it's pretty much a, a very debilitating injury for a lot of runners. So guys, just some honorable mentions now in terms of running injuries. We have shin splints or medial tibial stress syndrome, which is pain along our tibial border that extends into our muscles a little bit. Now, what this is, is pain that comes from uh, poor load management. The longer the pain is along the length of our tibia, the worse it is. We can also get metatarsal stress fractures. This is generally reserved for people doing crazy amounts of volume like ultra marathoners and especially young girls that are really into their running and they may not be getting their menstrual cycles and their hormones are sort of out of whack. We can get lower back pain from repeated running, especially when our body isn't used to doing it and copying the impact that we get. There is some talk that heel strikers tend to get a little bit more lower back and hip pain, but this isn't really proven yet. Lastly is hip pain and very similar to back pain. It's increased the amount of load. Women tend to get it a lot more than men, especially ones in their middle age. Alright guys, so getting into our exercises, my number one exercise that I get people to do is single leg squats to a height that they are able to do comfortably. So with a bench, chock it up with some phone books or some weights if you're in the gym. It's really great exercise to develop one quad strength. Quad strength is so important for all these different injuries that we've just spoken about. If you're not absorbing load through your knee well and if your quads are weak, if you're someone that has a history of knee injuries, especially patellofemoral pain, especially ITB pain, even down the chain into plantar fasciitis, if you have weak quads, you'll be putting more load through your leg. And therefore, you are predisposing yourself to getting these injuries because you can't absorb this load in your knee because your quads are weak. So guys, you really want to make sure that your quads are really strong and robust. So you should be able to whack out about 20 single leg squats in a row with good rhythm, not rushing. You should also be able to do some supplementary single leg press. It's a great way to whack on some strength. I think 150% of your body weight, you should be able to do a single leg push, just one rep. 150% of your body weight in terms of weight that you're pushing is a, is a good indication that you've got at least some reasonable amount of quad strength. If you're a serious runner and you're getting through like half marathons, I would expect more than 150%, you know, maybe 180%. 
We're really just trying to get that good strength in your quads. Another supplementary exercise that we can add on is our knee extensions. You can set up at home as seen on the right there with a band using a chair or if you have access to a gym, use the leg extension machine there. Definitely the single leg squat is my number one. My leg press is the number two. And finally, if you really wanted to work on your quad strength because you had a deficit, I get people to do knee extensions. It isolates the muscle. It works it really hard. I tend to give the knee extensions a lot more to patients that suffer from patellofemoral pain if they can tolerate the motion. Not all of them can tolerate the motion. Also for ITB pain as well, sorry. We can also look at, you know, do we want to add in a goblet squat? Do we want to add in a back squat? Do we want to add in a front squat? They're all squats, guys, but they all do work our quads. They also have a secondary ability to work our glutes. I tend to not worry with runners because getting them into the gym can be a little bit challenging at times. But if you're someone that does like to squat, great. By squatting, you're going to be developing good quads and good glutes. So I thought I would just chuck this in at the end to say that I am considering that these are options. But if you're doing a single leg squat, it's much harder. You've got the stability side of things. You've got the quad strength. And if you're then topping up with some single leg press and or some knee extensions, you're going to be getting plenty being a runner through those two, if not three exercises at the start. So guys, my next number one exercise is calf raises. Really easy to do as a runner when you're out and about. It's just body weight. You can do it off the edge of a ledge or a step. The gutter is always there. This is a great exercise to build capacity in your lower leg. By building capacity up to the ability to do 20 reps in a row without a break, similar to the speed I'm doing in this video here, you're going to be really robust. We've seen it in the science. You can help to prevent injury to your foot, ankle, and shin if you develop good calf strength. So guys, this is going to help with your Achilles tendonitis, Achilles tendinopathy. It's going to help with up the chain in your patellofemoral pain or your kneecap pain because you're absorbing load better because you've got more strength in your lower leg. Now, the soleus press is super undervalued. The soleus actually feeds in and makes up more of our Achilles tendon than our other muscles. So developing some sort of way to do um, soleus press, which is when you're seated or in a bent knee position and raising, I would really suggest we look at adding that into your program, guys. So once again, a goal of trying to do 20 standing raises off a ledge or the ability to do 20 soleus raises at roughly 25% of your body weight would be really challenging, guys. So it depends on the soleus machine that you have, but if you can put 25% weight on and do 20 reps, I think that's a great goal. My third and final number one exercise is either a side plank, as seen here, or we're doing a star plank. This is great for developing lateral sling strength. It develops good glute med strength. So what this is is our outside glute muscle, which is important when we think about our stability when we run. If we've got really good hip control, we're not going to get hip drop, which will help to prevent our lateral hip pain. It'll mean that our forces are more controlled. If we have poor hip control, we're going to be doing more side to side as we run. So having that really good strength around our glutes, around our hips is going to mean that we just have more control and fluidity with our running style. So my challenge for you with this exercise group, guys, is at least a two to three minute side bridge. It's really going to be hard to do, but I think it's worthwhile working towards a difficult goal. Secondly, is trying to get between 12 and 15 star planks with really good form in a row. So that's meaning our hips are not dropping. The underside of our body is nice and straight. It's a really great exercise, guys. Get into this one. Hey guys, just jumping back in really quickly to talk about load management. However, load management is probably one of the most important topics in this talk. Um, I will stress that in the science, the link between the load management doesn't actually exist in a, a running population yet. However, I'm sure the science will, will eventually do the appropriate studies to, to spit out that data. But we have seen in other populations such as football players and rugby league players and, and other populations that 
disparity in load or the amount of effort that players are doing can essentially predispose them to preventing injury but also causing injury as well. So if you go from not doing much to doing a lot, the disparity between those two points is what sort of can predispose you to getting these um, repetitive use injuries as well. So what load is the, is the amount of work that you're doing? So in the running sense, it's probably the amount of kilometers that you're doing at the intensity that you're doing. Um, and we're looking at how much your tissues are, are doing in the week that you're working versus how much they did in that previous month. And that disparity is what we're trying to probably avoid is huge leaps between not much to a lot. So a lot of us that are probably getting back into a lot of running right now, um, we just got to make sure that we're not making huge jumps. If you're someone that's a seasoned runner, you just don't want to fall into that pitfall of, okay, I want to run faster and you know every run that I do is going to be a 7 to 10 kilometer run. You need to make sure that your training is appropriate. You might have some tempo run days. You might have some speed run days. You might have some sort of volume day as well. And you're just going to make sure that you adjust your loads on the top days that you're running. <clears throat> the other thing is don't try to make too many changes at once. Don't try to increase your speed whilst increasing your volume. You know, you probably want to have some, if you're going to increase your speed, you want to probably want to increase your speed on some days and then drop your volume for that week. That way you sort of level out because you're more intense with the speed work, but you're decreasing the volume. So essentially we're only making a small increase in load. But if you were to have increased your speed and increased your volume, our load then jumps up and it's a bit too much. <clears throat> so these this idea of load management um, is, is really prevalent with managing all the conditions that we spoke about in this video. So plantar fasciitis, uh, Achilles tendonitis, um, patellofemoral pain, lateral hip pain. It, it's really important that you don't make huge jumps and <clears throat> push these tissues beyond their capacity. So anyway, let's jump into the next exercise. I really hope you take those things on board because I think it's very important for managing um, all these injuries that you runners tend to see. So guys, my final supplementary exercises for our glutes is a hip thruster, which is the exercise seen here. It can be done with a two leg or single leg variation. This is for more glute max or our big bum muscle. <laughs> this is the one that's really going to be important for just great general hip strength. There also is an element of trunk control in the single leg variation, so make sure that you're not dropping through your hips. The next supplementary exercise is a great one to do after you've done your side planks or your star planks, your crab walks and monster walks, work your glute med, it's a great burner to work that lateral hip or glute muscle. For a crab walk you want to be in a slight squatted position as you move laterally, monster walks are when your legs are locked out and straight. I recommend to keep the band around the middle of your feet. A supplementary exercise for your uh, glute max is just some flat glute bridges, popping a band around the outside of your legs. Um, as I said, guys, these are supplementary. These aren't my number ones, but they are certainly great to add into a routine or a program. They just aren't my number one if you are out and about and you had to get through three exercises to help prevent your injury. So just remember guys, these are just little extra ones that you can do to tack on to the end of a program if you felt like you wanted more. So guys, let's summarize my top three exercises. Number one is a single leg squat. Get really good at this guys. I want you to build up to a goal of 20 reps. Standing calf raises, I want you to build up to a goal of 20 reps. Again, make sure you're doing it off a step. Just don't go too quick. Nice and slow as seen in the video here control the exercise guys finally is a star plank make sure that you're raising up through your hips you're not dropping the underside of your hips down towards the floor we're trying to get about 15 reps in a row this is going to be so challenging for you guys but it's a great exercise Hey guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I really hope that you learned something on how to prevent running injuries. Hopefully three to five different exercises that you can do to help prevent running injuries would be the goal for me. I hope you learned something. If you did, please subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification so you don't miss any further videos. And if you know someone that would benefit from this as well, please share the link with them. That would be absolutely fantastic. If you have any questions for me, guys, once again, drop them in the comment box below and I hope you have a great day. Thank you. Bye.